Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Sunday, June 24th, and uh, here's Debbie moving into the northeast Gulf of Mexico. Here you can see her center fairly well defined on satellite imagery. The multiple vortices, vortices from yesterday have combined into a more well defined center, though it is still exposed to the southwest of the main convective mass, which is still being sheared to the northeast by an upper low in the northwest Gulf of Mexico, imparting upperly winds aloft uh, from the southwest. And uh, this will remain a problem for Debbie for the next couple of days. It will take a while for the wind shear to let up. As the upper low backs away, and if she ends up moving quickly into Florida here over the next couple of days, she will likely remain a tropical storm, and as long as the center is exposed, do not expect hurricane intensity. However, the recon is finding hurricane force winds at flight level to the north of the center, and that's probably translating to 60 to 70 mile per hour winds at the surface. So this is definitely a powerful tropical storm, uh, but the biggest problem from it probably will remain the rains that have been soaking Florida for the last day or two, and will continue to soak it, bringing over a foot of rain to some place and tropical storm conditions and warnings are already taking place along the coast here, especially this northern portion in the panhandle uh, that uh, will be affecting them regardless of whether this moves northeast or stalls and turns west. Here's the water vapor imagery. You can see the, the counterclockwise spin here in the northwest Gulf of Mexico showing the upper low uh, that is still shearing uh, Debbie from the southwest. And this upper low will be backing to its southwest over the next couple of days, eventually allowing upper ridging to make this a more favorable environment for Debbie. Again, if it uh, moves into Florida within a couple of days, we'll not have time to really strengthen. But if it moves westward slowly towards Louisiana or Texas, this upper low backing away and this ridge building eastward will likely uh, create an environment more favorable for strengthening at which point we would likely have Hurricane Debbie at some point during the next few days. You can see that we have this big ridge over the plains and we have this shortwave trough now moving into the eastern United States and uh, this is what's trying to pick up Debbie and move her northeast and the ridge is fighting to capture her. These two features have been duking it out and it uh, will be fighting over Debbie's fate. This is the 500 millibar chart. You can see the uh, ridge clearly as we saw on satellite imagery extending eastward and then we have this trough coming into the northeast United States and they're fighting here. There is a weakness and a, a short alleyway uh, for this storm to move into Florida if she wants to. She has to be propelled in that direction though. This weakness is not going to pick her up easily and that is why she's moving very very slowly at a slow drift to the northeast at this moment. But if this ridge builds in just a little bit more uh, she's going to try to turn west slowly and she'll probably be stalled around here in the northwest gulf for the next couple of days northeast gulf i'm sorry i don't expect her to move a whole lot over the next couple of days and it's going to take a lot to get her out of here one way or the other west or east it's going to take quite a bit these are the model tracks you can see are still split entirely we have a group that have joined the GFS now going to the northeast and we still have models going off to the west into Louisiana and Texas this was the NHC track at 5 a.m. this morning which was supporting my ideas going towards Texas the 11 a.m. track has shifted north into Louisiana following the shift of the guidance of the UK Met and the European model which I'll show you now this is the European which had been stalwart for about five runs in a row bringing this into southern Texas but made a shift last night. This is a 24 hours out strengthening and uh, then it does start to move it west here. It stalls and moves west a little bit by 48 hours, but then it lifts it north into Louisiana instead of taking it south towards Texas, which is a new solution that has been adopted by this model and the UK Met and the Canadian. And I'm not, I'm still not sure whether I agree with it moving towards this ridge northward into Louisiana, but this would be a bad storm for New Orleans and certainly so the solution cannot be discounted. However, I do want to see this occur for more than one model run. This was just one cycle at 0Z shifting these models, and I'd like to see this occur more than once. We'll see what the 12Z models look like this morning, but with all this uh, frag fragility in the pattern, this is a very difficult forecasting situation, probably one of the most difficult steering forecasts we will have for the entire season, and uh, the models are still split on this even though it is occurring right under their noses, so uh, we can't trust these solutions fully. Certainly anything at this point is pretty much possible, uh, and uh, folks should be aware of this, uh, but I'd like to see more of more consistency seen consensus before significantly changing the track. I do think that eventually a turn westward will occur and at this point I think it'll stay south of Louisiana but of course confidence has been lowered a bit by the fact that more models have joined the GFS and drifting her towards Florida or towards the Louisiana coastline. So these folks as I've said for the last several days should be very aware of the possibility for a landfall regardless of what my forecast track is because this is one of the most difficult situations we're going to have during this season. 
We still have the Japanese uh, moving the south of Louisiana towards Texas in line with the ideas I have had, and the NASA model also, which has been doing very well with Debbie, by the way, compared to some of the other models, uh, has this stalling south of Louisiana through day four, and then it starts moving it westward towards Texas by day five, not strengthening a whole lot, but you can see the track idea is still there. So I'm not completely abandoned with the track idea I had yesterday, but of course confidence is a little lower with more models split off and going farther north and farther east. So in general, uh, the folks in here are going to have to keep a close eye on this storm. We're already getting tropical storm conditions and warnings out for especially the Florida Panhandle and parts of the peninsula as well will have tropical storm-like conditions for the next couple of days regardless of whether Debbie ends up sneaking into the coastline or not. Uh, at this point, it's very hard to say whether she'll sneak northeast. Much of it depends on whether she'll sneak under this convection with her center following it because of the sheer nature of the storm. I still think she'll stall here for a couple of days. It'll be hard to get her out of this uh, area of the Gulf, eventually drifting westward, and I think just south of the Louisiana coastline will be her track. But again, everywhere around uh, the North Gulf Coast should be ready for the possibility of a landfall, and especially the New Orleans area could get a decent storm surge from this as she drifts very slowly past the southern coast for a couple of days, if not three or four days, trying to get past this area could bring a decent surge into uh, these areas. So these folks should be watching for this. Heavy rain will be the biggest story, but again, if she drifts west for more than a couple of days, hurricane intensity is very possible. So we will keep a close eye on Debbie, and uh, I will keep you updated as things evolve. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.